गजाननम भूत गणाति से कपितजंबू फलसार पक्षित उमासुत शोक विनाश कारण नमा विघ्नेश्वर पाद पंकज गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुर साक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मत्चार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरु परंपरा वसुदेव सुत देव कंस चाणूर मर्दनम देवकी परमानंद कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु स्वागत वेलकम टू ऑल फॉर संगीता प्रोग्राम सेशन थ्री टूडे इज अक्टोबर फिफ्टींथ and i'm right now in california at 6 o'clock in the morning and i'd like to say a big thanks to all who are joining today especially for your sustained interest in the sankita program so as usual we'll start with the uh, review of last session some of you missed it in the last session uh, i had given a brief introduction to chapter 1 of bhagavad gita which describes the despondency of arjuna and we covered uh, the introduction of various warriors from the kaurava side by duryodhana you know the whole bhagavad gita is a report given by sanjaya the trusted advisor of dhritarashtra who is blind and sanjaya has the unique power of audio visual like a television and he is reporting it so you will find sanjay watcher and sanjaya reports this and duryodhana introduces the warriors to his acharya dronacharya so verses 1.3 to 1.6 uh, he had the uh, pandavas army warriors and then he introduced his own army warriors to uh, dronacharya and then starts comparing the strength of both armies in 10th verse so i'd given you the commentary on verses including explanations on the sanskrit terms and meanings and some of the grammatical aspects of sanskrit terms that is what we covered in last session and i'd sent you the link of the video and i hope you'll be able to review them at your convenience so going further we are in the battlefield of kurukshetra where the armies are lined up i'm not sure how many of you have really visited kurukshetra kurukshetra is a very very large place a lake now and i can imagine how big the field must have been to assemble both the armies so you see a picture here of both the armies together and today we are going to really see how the chariot is come right in the center between the two armies so we are going to continue with the 11th verse in first chapter where duryodhana instructs his army ajaneshu sa sarveshu yatha bhagam avasthitah bhishma meva abirakshantu The explanation on this verse, Aya Neshu. Aya is the root. You all know Dakshinayanam, Nayanam, Uttarayanam. Means to go or come. Aya Neshu. 
cha is a conjunction and sarveshu sarva all is instructing all the soldiers of his army yatha bhagam bhagam is a very easy word to understand it's a division yatha means as as divided or assigned you know in the army people are assigned definite strategic positions so this yatha bhagam means as assigned the role that you are assigned and the position or the place you are assigned avasthitaha two words together ava plus sa, sa iti being at a particular place tamil also use the word avasthai it is mean the one situation you are undergoing bishma meva two words again bishma plus eva bishma second vibhakti singular eva only abhi rakshantu abhi rakshantu is to take care raksha is to protect abhi rakshantu to protect or to take care it's a verb kriya padam bhavantaha very respectfully you all plural bhavantaha so what is the instruction duryodhana is giving he says therefore you all having been assigned your respective positions or strategic positions in the army take care of bishma only why bishma only because bishma is such an important person he is the senior most of the kuru vamsham there grand old sire you know in families when there is now a very elderly person who is wise who is able to give some guidance even a moral support may not be able to do all the homework but even if he gives a moral support people feel happy and join family systems they used to have this there will be one elderly tata or party and such a person used to be respected even though they were not physically very active but they will provide all the guidance because of the experience that they have and they will give the moral support so in this case bishma is such a person who is the most respected person from duryodhana's point of view and therefore he is instructing all his armies you all stay in the positions or the, the roles in which you are assigned but make sure that you protect bishma don't let any danger come to him if there is someone coming to attack him please make sure you protect him because he is very important to give us the inspiration and the enthusiasm to fight in the process he is also telling bishma look you are a key person here in this fight and i am giving you that importance so bishma should also feel happy that there is someone in his family who is respecting him who is giving him the position of importance so that is the the uh, uh, the verse indicating the the importance given to uh, bishma and in uh, games you know you have uh, respective roles like uh, quarterback or wicket keeper in cricket they have to do their role in order to support the team efforts so in this case army people are given strategic roles positions and they have to safeguard that but in addition contribute to the goal of the team and that is to win and to win bishma is very important therefore he is instructing 
all the soldiers of his army to take care of Bhishma only, even at the risk of your lives. So, having given that instruction, let's see what he says for what happens further. Now, Bhishma is naturally inspired by this. And he blows the conch. You know, good old days, I think all the soldiers took their own conches with them. Like uh, the cops carrying uh, the whistles, you know, the beagles. They find somebody running, they will blow the whistle. So they always keep it with them. So I think the soldiers in good old days carried their own conches. You will see it in the subsequent uh, verses too, that each one has a conch. And each conch has a name too. So in this verse, number 12, Bhishma very enthusiastically blows the conch to signal the start of the war. Tasya sanjanyan harsham kuru vriddha pita mahaha Simmanadam binauto stay Shankam tadmo pratapavan. Tasya Tat prasasya together. You heard it in the Sanskrit lessons before. Tasya is his Sancha Nayana. Some plus jan together it's a sandhi sanja nayana sam jan one who arouses one who excites by his behavior or himself is very excited and therefore he is able to arouse others one who arouses in this case it is bhishma Harsham, happy. Kuru Vridhaha. Kuru refers to the, the lineage of Kuru, the clan of Kuru. Vridhaha refers to old. Vridha is the root. The old among Kurus, masculine gender, singular. Kuru Vridhaha, the old, the senior most among Kurus. Pita Mahaha. Pita means father, you know. Maha means great or grand. This is grandfather, great grandfather. Pita Mahaha, great grandfather. Simma Nadham. Simma, you know, is lion. And Nadham is the noise produced by a lion, typically called roaring. It's actually the name of the conch, which roars like a lion. Very frightening kind of noise. Vinadhyā, V plus nad, is to give out a call. Ucchaihi, loudly. Shankam refers to the conch. Dadmau is to blow. Pratap Avan. Some people keep the name as Pratap. Pratap means one who has valor, valor, very courageous, brave. Pratapaha Asya Asti Valorous Pratap Avan. Who is this Pratap Avan? Here he is the great grandfather Bhishma. So Duryodhana's great grandfather was excited and valorous, very brave. Bhishma, the elder amongst the Kauravas, now roared like a lion through his conch to give out a call. You know, in uh, our Sanatana Dharma, the shankam or conch 
is always given a lot of importance. That's why I think the conch is being carried. In fact, Vishnu has the Shankar Chakra. And the conch is used even today in temples. When they do the Rudram, recite Rudram, they blow the conch. We are not able to hear you. No. No, no. We can't hear you. We cannot hear you. We sir, cannot you have sir, you have Where muted you? Sir? I think you have muted yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, I think uh, uh, you should uh, unmute, uh, mute your uh, audio and video both because the internet may not be uh, good at, at some places. Okay. This is amongst uh, the uh, temple's custom that they use the conch for anything auspicious. And in this case, the conch is blown by Bhima, Vishma, the elder among Kauravas. Okay, this is actually a signal to start the war and you'll find others are following suit. As you'll see from the next slide, the war cry starts. Verse 13, Tata Shankascha Peryascha Parnavanaka go bukaha Sahaseva Pyahanyanta Sasabdas Tumulo Abavati Here you'll find the conscious which are blown. They produce so much of noise. In addition, you have so many other instruments. Some of them are drums. Some of them are blown with wind like the conch. Some of them shaped like cow horn. and stringed instruments, all these are to excite the people to a war situation. Even today you will find uh, the army has its own band, the, the, the police force have their own band. It's all to create a mood in which people get inspired to fight or do whatever what is given to them. Tataha, then, is the conjunction. Shankaha, conscious. Shankam, Shankaha, plural, masculine. Cha and Beryaha. It comes from the word Beri, the feminine. Beryaha is plural. Kettle drums, you know, the different types of drums where you Beat on one side. It doesn't have both sides like Mridangam, one side. Parnavaha, cha anakaha, cha gomukaha, cha. You will find a lot of and 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 and. Tabors, Parnavaha, large military drums, you know, one which can be blown on both sides also. And instruments which are shaped like cow horn, gomukaha, go means cow, mukaha. Kauhan. Sahasa, suddenly. Abhyahantaha, Abhihan. It's a, it's a sandhi there again. A lot of sandhis will be there in Gita. To beat in order to make a sound. Abhyahantaha, Sabdaha, noise. Tumula. In English, it is tumultuous. 
You see the similarity between Sanskrit and uh, English here. Tumula, tumultuous, almost same. In fact, you see the first, uh, the five albums of Tumul is exactly same as Sanskrit, Tumula. So there must be some linkages between the two languages, no doubt. Above it to be. So following Bhishma's blowing of the conch, everybody got excited and they started blowing their own instruments, conches, drums, all kinds of instruments to make a huge noise. The conches and kettle drums, tabers, drums and cow horns, they all start suddenly blare forth from the Kauravas, making a tumultuous sound, a tremendous sound. It's a war cry. So people all get ready to fight. So let's go further to the next slide. So well, this is from the Kaurava side, and naturally the opposite side, Pandavas, also have to respond. Only then it means they are also getting ready. So the Pandavas respond to the war cry. Tataha Svetair Hayair Yukte Mahati Sendane Sitao Madavaha Pandavas Chaiva Divyo Shanko Pradat Matuhu. You'll find many of these words have the Sandhis, therefore, when you are Reading it, you have to be a little careful to make sure that you connect the words together. So, in the next slide, I'm giving you the breakup. Tataha, then, by now you must be familiar with this word tataha, then. Shwetaihi. Shwetaha means white. Shwetaihi, white, adjective. Haya he horses. Haya means horse. You all know Haya Griver. Vishnu once took an avatar as Haya Griver with the, the face of a horse. So the plural of Haya is Haya he. Yukte, coming from the root yuj, to join. I mentioned it to explain the word yoga. Yoga also is derived from the root huge to join. So yukte means yoked. You know how these horses are drawn together in a, in a chariot. They get yoked. Yukte. Mahati means large, coming from mahat. It's an adjective. Chandane to the chariot. Chandan. Sthitao, even though it may be placed, it's seated. I think the right word would be Sthitao means seated. Madhavaha. Madhava. You'll find many names for Krishna and Madhava is one of the names. It means clan of Madhu. It also means consort of Ma. Who is Ma? Mahalakshmi herself. Davaha means consort, her husband. Mahalakshmi's husband is called Madhavaha. Another name for Krishna. You'll find many names for Krishna coming in. You know, one beauty about Sanskrit is that it describes the quality of the person. And one may have more than one quality and therefore they get different names. So Madhavaha, the quality of being the husband of Mahalakshmi, the name given to Krishna, also to Vishnu, of course. Pandavaha, in this case, this refers, references to Arjuna. You have to assume that because he is together with Krishna in the same chariot. 
Pandava. Divya. In fact, the word Devam comes from Divya, divine. Here also you find some similarity between English and Sanskrit. Divya, Divaha, divine. Divaha is daytime, bright. To shine. And to shine is divine. So Divya is divine. Shankhao. Shankhao. You know, when we discussed the numbers in Sanskrit, I told you dual, singular, dual, and plural. And au generally means dual. In this case, Shankhao is too conscious. Dual. Pradat matuhu. Pra plus dha, ma, dma, dma. It is the and ma together to blow. So once the Kauravas, they started the war cry with various noise making devices, it was a signal to the Pandavas, let's start now the war. So they responded, who? Like Bhishmacharya, the eldest of the Kurus, was the first one to blow the conch. In this case, the Pandavas, Madhava or Krishna, and Arjuna, the son of Pandu, who were seated in their magnificent chariot, Mahat, Mahati's magnificent chariot, yoked with white horses. They blew their divine conscious. This chariot has also got a philosophical significance. It's compared to life. It's compared to life drawn by white horses in Kathopanishad, it is coming up, uh, the chariot is compared to the human life, the body. And the horses are the senses. And the driver is the mind. So you have to rein in the senses like you rein in the horses. With the mind as a driver who pulls it. Don't run away. Keep it under control and steers it also in the right direction. So it's a, also a philosophical meaning here that the chariot is the human body in which the mind is the driver and the horses are the senses and the mind controls it. And the mind, once it becomes divine, it joins like huge through yoga, yogis, they were able to control the senses so beautifully like Krishna is controlling the chariot, in this case, with his horses. So the Pandavas, they responded, Krishna and Arjuna taking the lead, blowing their own conscious. No. Interestingly, each of these conch has got a name, and you will see this. Pancha Janyam Hrishikesho Devadattam Dananjayaha Poundram Dadmo Mahasankam Bhima Karma Vrikodaraha Pancha Janyam name of Krishna's conch. You know, it's interesting that even conches have names. It is not just called a conch. You can just call it Shankam, but it's not. It is got a divine name. Now in this case, Panchajanyam, it's a divine conch. 
which was retrieved at the time of Samudra Mantan, you know, when the Devas and Asuras, they churned the ocean, many things came out. And one of the most valuable things was the Panchajanyam conch. And who owns it? Krishna, who is now called Krishi Kesho. Panchajanyam Rishi Kesho. Then the conch which was owned by Krishna. In this case, it's called Hrishi Kesho. What could mean? Kesham means generally refer to the hair. Hrishi Kesho, one who has a beautiful hair. So, Pancha Janyam Rishi Kesho, Krishna blew the conch called Pancha Janyam. Devadattam is again. Now these names could be a little misleading. You don't know whether it is the name of a person or name of a conch. So don't get confused. Devadattam here is the name of the conch owned by Arjuna. The next word is Dhananjaya. Now Arjuna assumes another name, Dhananjaya. No, Arjuna was one of the wealthiest persons, you know. In amongst the Pandavas, Dhanam Jayaga. Dhanam means wealth. Jayaha means wins. Narjuna won a lot of wealth. He was also one of the most skilled warriors, one of the most beautiful, handsome warriors. It is said that he shot the fish eye, the fish which was hanging on from the ceiling by looking at its image down below in water. You must have heard this story, Amar Chitra Katha and other places, lots of stories come. So, so highly skilled he was, and it is not a surprise that he won a lot of wealth. So, in this case, Arjuna is called as Dhananjayaha, and the name of the conch that he blew was Devadattam. Next again, another name of conch, Poundram. It's the name of a conch. And who owned it? Bhima. Bhima Karma. Bhima Karma is one who frightens, who, who does terrible things to put the sense of fear into others, who frightens others. Bhima Karma. And Bhima is known to be a very large person, a very, very strong person, very brave person, and also physically large. And therefore, his conch has to be really big. It's called Mahashankam in this case, the big conch of Bhima. He's got an adjective called Vrukodaraha. Vrukodaraha. I said Sanskrit names describe qualities, and one of the qualities of Bhima was Vrkodarga. Vrka means the wolf. Many of you must have seen how slim the belly of the wolf is. Wolf is a big eater. It can eat any amount of food, but then the belly will be always kind of sunk inside, you know. It is very slim. Udaraha means belly. Krishna has got another name called Dhamodaram. Dhamam plus Udaram. Dhamam means rope. You know, when he was a kid, he was doing all naughty things and uh, all kinds of, uh, <clears throat> what he called Nakara in Hindi. <coughs> and Yashoda couldn't stand it. So he, she tied him with a rope around his belly to a pillar. So that's how he acquired the name Dhamodaran. So here, Vrkodaraha, Vrkaha plus Udaraha, one who has a belly like that of a wolf, even though he was a very strong person who could eat a lot of food, but his belly was sunken, he was very slim, tender. Not a pot belly, but just the opposite of pot belly. Pot belly is convex. In this case, it is concave. 
it is sunk inside. So vrikho daraha means one who has the belly like a wolf, which is inside. The stomach is indrawn. Quite the opposite of many people nowadays who have pot bellies. So, in this verse, it describes Rishi Kesa, who is Krishna, blew the Panchajanya conch, and Arjuna blew the Devadatta, and Bhima, the one who puts fear into the minds of others, the doer of terrible deeds, having a slim belly like a wolf, blew the great conch called Poundra. Going further, others follow suit, the Pandava brothers. Each one has his own conch. I think they must have brought it before they started for the war. Like you have a backpack nowadays, people carried their own conch to blow. So here it's all described. Ananta Vijayam Raja Kunti Putro Yudhishthiraha Nakulaha Sagadevascha Sugosha Mani Pushpakau So you'll find names of conscious and also names of the Pandavas. Ananta Vijayam is a name of the conchal of Yudhishthira. The eldest amongst the Pandavas, who never faced defeat, he was always one, and therefore he called Ananta Vijayam, name of conch. Raja King Kunti Putraha, son of Kunti, Nakulaha Sahadevesa, the youngest of the Pandavas. Nakula and Sahadeva. It is Sahadeva. Sugosha Mani Pushpakao. The names of the respective conscious. Sugosha of, from Nakula and Sahadeva's conch called Mani Pushpakao. So, Yudhishthira, the son of Kunti, blew the conch called Ananta Vijaya and Sahadeva and Nakula blew the Mani Pushpaka and Sugosha conches. These are the respective names. Going further, Kasyasaparameshvasaha Shikhandicha Maharataha Dhrishtudyam no viratascha satya kicha aparajitaha. You will find some of the names of kings here. You know, it was the Pandava army was an alliance, like allied forces. They had kings supporting them from various kingdoms. And they are all together in the war with Pandavas. So Kasyaha of Kasi Cha and Parameshwasaha. Paramaha means superior. That is why you call Parameshwaran. The Supreme Paramaha. Ishwasaha Ishuhu is bow. Supreme bow. One who has a supreme bow. Shikandi. Shikandi is the name of Drupatas. Daughter turned son. There is an interesting story about Shikandi. Shikandi is the totally means Shikai, having a tough. But it's the name of the person who was in his earlier birth, Amba. Amba was actually abducted by Bhishma. And brought as a bride for his stepbrother, Vichitra Virya. 
you know, Bhishma was sworn to be a bachelor, but uh, he thought, why not I get my stepbrother married? And he abducted Amba Ambal. But Amba actually loved somebody else. So Vichitra Virya let him let her go. But the lover, he said, No, I will not marry you because you went to another man. So Amba then asked Bhishma, You marry me because you are the one who brought me. And Bhishma refused because he was sworn to be a bachelor. So at that time, Amba swore that I will cause your deaths. And she was born a daughter to Drupata called Shikandini. But she was raised as a man and she was taught all the warfare and she was exceedingly skilled in warfare. And she was in fact married <laughs> to a girl. But then when they realized uh, this is not going to work, Shikandini approached Yaksha and borrowed his manhood from him and became a man, so called Shikandi. So in this case, let's say Shikandi is he. And he also took part in the war along with the Pandavas, along with his father, Drupata. So that's which you have two sons, Drishtu Dhyumnan, son of Drupada, whom I mentioned in my previous session, his history and background, Drupada as well as Drishtidyumna, who are students. And Drishtidyumna learned warfare from Dronacharya. And now he is opposing his own guru. Maharataha is a title again, as mentioned last time, like Padma Vibhushan or Bharatatana, Maharataha is a title for one was fought so many battles. Virataha, name of a king, Virata. Aparajitaha. Jitaha, Aparajitaha. Undefeated Satyaki, name of a warrior. Again. So here you find many warriors with their adjectives also coming up here. The king of Kashi. An excellent archer with the supreme bow, he had a large bow. Shikandi, the mighty warrior. Drishtidumna. Virata. Ansatyaki, the undefeated one. So they were all the warriors, and what did they do? Drupatau. Draupate yascha sarvasaha prithivi pate saubhadrascha mahabahuhu shankan dadmuhu prutak prutak They also joined the war cry. Other warriors who joined the war cry, they also have to make noise, isn't it? Everyone is excited. Everyone is making noise. Why not we also make noise? So, Drupataha he was the king of a territory called Panchal. So, Draupati was called Panchali as a daughter of Drupata who was the king of Panchal. Name of king of Panchal, father of Draupati, Drupataha. Draupate Yaha, sons of Draupata. Draupati, Draupate Yaha, sons of Draupati. Sarvasaha, all as such. Prithvi Pate, Lord of the Earth. King Saubhadra, Lord of the Earth means referring to the king. Saubhadraha. Subhadraha is son of Subhadra. Who was son of Subhadra? Abhimanyu. I mentioned about Abhimanyu in my last session. 
how he learned the chakra vyuhu do partially while he was still in the womb of subhadra ultimately he could not win over the chakra vyuha which was like a net spread by the kauravas he didn't know how to escape from it mahabahuhu having big arms shankan dadmuhu blew their conscious prithak prithak respectively i think vyasacharya found it difficult to give all the names of conscious so he has given only the names of some specific conscious and here in this case all the other warriors he has just left it they are blew their own respective conscious sure they must have had some name but not covered here so drupada the king and the sons of draupadi were five of them and the son of subhadra the mighty aunt all blew their respective conscious <clears throat> you can imagine how much of noise this must have made there are two armies each soldier blowing his own conch even if you hear one shankan adam it is very huge but imagine thousands of them making noise with their conches on top of it you have those kettle drums and drums and tabors and uh, cow horn shaped of instruments all making so much of noise surely it must be a tremendous kind of noise sagosho dardha rashtranam hridayane vyadarayat nabascha prativim chaiva tumulo abhyanunadayan <coughs> sagosho that loud sound dardra rashtranam here call the people who are belong to the rashtra are covered by the dardra rashtranam hridayani their hearts you know you get scared when there is a sudden explosion or there is a sudden noise everybody gets scared and start running right but imagine if this kind of sound produced by two armies how it will be it tore the hearts of dardarashram vyadaryat who dardarashtranam hridayani vyadaryat is composed of two v plus dhara which is dhara is root to tear vidhara to tear nabaha is the sky cha and prativim the earth also eva tumulaha again the word tumulaha comes tumul to us tremendous vyanunada yan vinu plus anu plus nad to resound you know that sound goes up and down earth is kind of a shield and then you have the sky and is reverberating <clears throat> between heaven and earth the tremendous sound produced by all these conches and other instruments tore the hearts of the rashtra's party reverberating between heaven and earth that is the meaning of this verse number 19 going further it's time for arjuna to take some initiative and he picks up the bow ata vyavasthitan drishtva dardara rashtran khapi dvajah pravrte shastra sampate danuruddham ya pandavah 
narrates the verse 20, the next line is really what is narrated by Sanjaya to Dhridharashtra. Rishi ke samtada vakyam Amida baha mahi pate So when there is so much of noise signaling the start of the war, Arjuna picks up the bow to show he's getting ready. Don't shoot yet, but I'm getting ready. Picks up the bow. <clears throat> Ataha, so and then. Yabasthitan. The people are all settling down in their respective position. Drishtva, seeing that. Dhardarashtran, the party of our people of Dhridarashtra. Kapi means monkey. Kapi Dvajaha. Dvaja is the flag. When you go to temple, you have what is called Dvaja Stambam. Remember? Any temple, you have a big flag staff. It's called Dvaja Stambam. Stambam is the pillar. And Dvaja is a flag. It's a flag staff. So Kapi Dvajaha, one who has a monkey on his flag. What monkey? It's not an ordinary monkey. It is Hanuman himself. The great Hanuman is pictured on the flag which flies over the chariot on his staff. Kapitvajaha, one who has that. Pravrte, pravrta, to begin. Pravrte, like preparation, pre, pre and pra mean the same thing. Sastra Sampate. Sastra means arms. Sampate to clash. Sastra Sampate. The clash of arms. Danuhu. Bow. Uddhamya. To pick it up. Pantavaha. In this case, Arjuna. Rishi Kesham. Addressing to Krishna. Rishi Kesham. To Krishna. Tada. Then. Vakyam. This is the last line in the previous verse, Vakyam idam, this aha to say, Mahipate. Mahipate is reports actually reference to the Dhridrashtra. Mahipate is generally meaning Lord of the Earth, but here Sanjay is really reporting it. And what does he say? Arjuna, <clears throat> who then seeing all the people of Dhridrashtra's party, settled in their respective positions and the clash of weapons was about to begin, Arjuna, the son of Pandu, whose ensign was that of a monkey on the, on the flag, picked up his bow and what did he do? He said this to Krishna, O Lord of the Earth, this is a report by Sanjaya. He tells Dhridharashtra, Arjuna picked up this bow and said the following words to Krishna. Oh no, you see how the audio visual is, I think, much better than today's television. That Sanjaya sitting miles off is able to see what is happening on the, on the battlefield and report word to word so clearly to Dhridharashtra. He is able to even hear what Arjuna is saying to Krishna, amidst all the noise that's going on, and the noise is so much, I'm sure Arjuna must have really shouted to Krishna so that he listens what he says. Now, in this case, Krishna is a driver. He's a very humble driver. He doesn't say a word. He just obeys the command given to him. See the quality of the Lord that is so humble, serving as the driver to Arjuna, and he obeys what Arjuna says. What does he say? Covered under verses 21 and 22. Arjuna Uacha, Arjuna said, 
सेनयोर उबयोर मध्ये रतम स्थापय मे अच्छुत यावत एता निरीक्षे हम यो दुकामान अवस्थितान कैर्मया सह योद्धव्यम अस्मिन रण समुद्धमे Arjuna said, "What did he say? You must have really shouted and given a command to Krishna, his driver. Krishna, he says, 'Sene yor uba yor badde, sene yo ho uba yo ho, sene yo ho. Do all here." Two armies, Ubayo ho, two armies in between. There are two armies. We saw the picture. The two armies, and right in the center is the chariot. Madhye <coughs> center duel, vibhakti, shasti. <coughs> Ratham is chariot. Stapaya, I think right word to be. is to park it or place it there stapaya establish also is stapaya to take the chariot me achuta achuta is another name to krishna you will find many names as i said krishna having in this case he called krishna achuta chuta means to fall and in sanskrit to put a it means the opposite one who does not fall achuta ha one who lends you the support he doesn't fall that is why we cling to him achuta ha one who is steady steadfast hold on to somebody who is steadfast then you will remain firm so achuta ha is a name here we do sandhya vandanam you you see when you sit it you say achuta right achuta ha is a name here given to krishna yavat antil etan this niriche nira pratichcha to observe or to see to watch aham i yodha kaman desiring to fight kama is to desire yodha is to fight desiring to fight avasthitan ava prastha to set into order we we explained it before also kai comes from the root kim what maya my so you see the resemblance uh, between maya and my between english and sanskrit here maya my see that so beautiful saha with yodhavyam to fight asmin this rana samudyame rana is battle samu udyame sama plus udyame undertaken together because only two parties can fight therefore rana samudyame means battle taken up together so arjuna says hey krishna he almost commands him as the master which role is going to reverse later on today the master is arjuna and krishna is a servant driver the one who drives in the middle of the two armies park my chariot of krishna so that i may see those who are standing here who want to fight with me and i should know with whom i must fight when the battle begins obviously arjuna is such a great warrior he is not going to uh, fight with uh, unknown warriors he is going to meet his match like in chess board you have the pawns the humble soldiers a pawn will go on counter pawn is powerful and yet it is in the front line like paratroopers to so the the big soldiers like the bishop and the rook they stand behind in their respective positions 
So Krishna wants to be taken. Arjuna says, Krishna, take me to the center of the army so that I can have a full view of the army to see who is all wanting to fight with me and I should know who they are before the battle begins. And Krishna doesn't say a word. He just obeys the command like a driver does, goes and parks it right in the center so that Arjuna has a vision. So with that, we conclude uh, today's uh, Sangeeta session number three. And as usual, we'll uh, have the video link sent. I'm sorry for the interruption in between, maybe for a couple of seconds. Uh, when you get the complete uh, video, you can take a look at it and review it anytime. Now I'm going to unmute you. If you have any comments, you can say the 